Welcome back, everyone. Let us discuss about remarks on KNERS sniper algorithm. So, as we have discussed all variations of KNN, okay, so we have seen KNN in case of discrete and real value target function, and as well as we have seen KNN in case of a distance weighted. In that, also, we have seen both the cases discrete and the real value target weighted function. So, okay, after that, so now we are at a stage to give some remarks on the KNERS sniper algorithm. Okay, so this is also part of instance-based learning. Okay, so before coming to this, first of all, you should learn about all the KNNs. Then it will be clear to you. Otherwise, I'll give you the links on the iCard. So please go back and watch those. Then continue with this. So let us get into the details. So coming to the remarks, the first remark that we can make is the distance-weighted KNN is the highly effective inductive inference method compared to the KNNs, okay, the distance weighted is the best one. So why we are saying it as a highly effective one is, suppose if you have a large data set and it is robust to, it is a noisy training data set. Our distance weighted KNN is robust to this noisy training data. So the reason is, we are taking the weighted average of all the samples. So here we have seen the case of a local and global both we have seen right in case of a local one only based on the k value we are taking only those many samples suppose if my k value is 5 i am taking only 5 samples and i am taking the weighted average of that suppose if we go for the global case there what we are doing we can take all the samples that are present in the database data set and there you can take a weighted average of that okay so if we take so suppose if i have few noisy examples also the result will be good. So that means this noisy data is smoothed because we are considering the weighted average of all the samples. So we can say that the distance weighted KNN is robust to the noisy training data. And this is effective when we have a large set of training data. Then coming to the second remark, do we have any inductive bias in case of KNN? Yes, of course we have. So here, how we are classifying the new instance X cube? It is based on the other instances which are nearby with the help of the Euclidean distance. Okay, so that we have already seen and we also learned about this Werner diagram also, right? So what has happened here in the Werner diagram? So when I'm considering only one K value and if this particular K is negative, so then my sample X cube is classified as a negative one. So where or if this is positive, if this one sample, if it is positive, it is classified as positive. So whereas coming to here, so here I have two positive samples and three negative samples. So what is the majority? Majority is negative. So the same sample XQ is classified as a negative one here. Okay. So this is what the inductive bias of that we have in the KN. So it is dependent on what is the K value that you are choosing. Okay, what the nearest neighbors are saying. So based on that, we are classifying the new instance. So that is the inductive bias. Then coming to the practical issues. So we have two practical issues. The first one is the curse of dimensionality. And the second one is efficient memory indexing. Okay, let us see what are this. First coming to efficient memory indexing. What is this? Why do we need this? Okay, so first what is this is? Storing all instances during the training. So in the K on the, all the KNN algorithms, we have two phases, right? The training phase as well as the classification phase. During the training phase, what we are doing, we are simply storing all the data. Whatever we have, we are simply storing it. We are not training the algorithm. But when we need a classification, that time we are retrieving the data and we are classifying based on what we have already stored. So storing all the instances is very important so for efficient access it has to be indexed so that the nearest neighbors can be identified efficiently in a shorter time so for that the solution that is given is kd tree so here the instances are stored at the leaves because accessing the leaves is very easy and with nearby instances stored at the same or nearby nodes for example if I take my k value as 3, so the first three values are stored at the center so that I can access them easily. And since they are at the leaf level, that is the first level that we can access and we can retrieve them easily. 
and the internal nodes are stored are also stored in a sorted fashion so that whenever you are getting a new query xq getting to the relevant leaf is very easy because it is the data is already sorted so i can access it easily so these two things are followed in the kd tree so with this the efficient memory indexing can be done okay the second practical issue is the curse of dimensionality so that means so the examples what we have solved is a very smaller one and there hardly we have three to four attributes okay suppose if i have multiple attributes many attributes hundreds and thousands of attributes suppose if we have so in that case also what we need to do we have to consider all the attributes based on that i should take a decision right so in that if i have multiple irrelevant attributes then calculating the distance based on all these attributes can be a misleading one so what i have to do is in order to overcome this we have to reduce or remove some irrelevant attributes so there should be a procedure to identify which are relevant and which are irrelevant so the first thing is you have to weigh each attribute separately instead of giving equal weightage to all the attributes you just give some weightage to each and every attribute so for that cross validation approach can be followed so what will be done with this cross validation approach is we can suppress the impact of irrelevant attributes to some extent so that means all the irrelevant attributes we are eliminating with the help of this cross validation the next way is eliminate the least relevant attributes here we are using leave one out cross validation approach so that means out of m one time one attribute will be left over and then we calculate the result and then at the other time we leave one more attribute and we will see so we are trying to identify which is an irrelevant one if we include which particular attributes we are getting a better result so that we will be trying to get in the leave one out cross validation approach okay so this requires a less training effort so compared to the cross validation approach this is somewhat better so then the other approach is stretching the each axis this is a less commonly used procedure okay suppose if some attribute is troubling us so then what we can do is you can stretch the axis by a value that varies over the instance space so according to the convenience of the algorithm convenience of my calculation i will stretch the axis so but what will happen i am doing everything according to my convenience but not according to what the data says so in that case what will happen is sometimes overfitting may result so this is a less commonly used approach the stretching of the axis is a less commonly used one so it is better either to go with the cross validation approach or leave one out cross validation approach so this is about the remarks on k nearest neighbor algorithm okay so in this slide i missed the neighbor word excuse me for that okay so this is about the k nearest neighbor algorithm hope you enjoyed if you have any queries do post in the comment section thanks for watching thank you